Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about anaplenotic reactions and glyoxylate cycle. The reactions that are going to replenish the shortfall of any uh, cycle that may be for example PCA cycle intermediates are going to be called as anaplenotic reactions. And these anaplenotic reactions are also going to be called as anicellary reactions, what we call it as anicellary. The anaplenotic means filling up, okay. So it is going to uh, filling up the shortfall of whatever the intermediates that are present in any one of the cycle. And coming to the glyoxylate cycle, this is also regarded as an anabolic variant of TCA cycle. Let's see in detail about all these anaplenotic reactions and glyoxylate cycle one by one. So as I told you anaplenotic reactions are also called as ancillary reactions. So the reactions concerned to fill up the intermediates of citric acid cycle that is a TCA cycle are called anaplenotic reactions or anaplerosis and the most important of anaplerotic reactions are those that replenish the oxaloacetate by adding the carbon dioxide to a three carbon compound either the pyruvate or the phosphoenol pyruvate so that's the best example of this anaplerotic reactions and we are going to have majorly of two important reactions that is the silent features of uh, important anaplerotic reactions are number one uh, some microorganisms such as uh, Arthobacter globiformis and E cells use an enzyme called as pyruvate carboxylase to catalyze the pyruvate to oxaloacetate or oxaloacetic acid. The enzyme pyruvate carboxylase was uh, first discovered by Wood and Workman who first demonstrated that carbon dioxide fixation is not restricted exclusively to autotrophs but it also operates in the heterotrophs. Okay, So that's how the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase requires the cofactor biotin which combines with the carbon dioxide in the presence of ATP to form carboxy biotin or active carbon dioxide which transfers the carbon dioxide to the form of pyruvate. Okay, and what happened in the, uh, resulting to form oxaloacetate. So this all thing is happening because of this conversion of uh, this carbon dioxide to giving rise to the pyruvate is going to be of the formation of oxaloacetate. Now the acetyl-CoA acts as a uh, what we call it as positive modulator to activate this enzyme and when excess of acetyl-CoA accumulates in the cell it accelerates the enzyme so that the excess of oxaloacetate is formed to accept the excess of Estyl CoA2. So that's how they are going to enter into the TCA cycle in forming the citrate, all those things. And some more other uh, microorganisms like E. coli possess another enzyme called as phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase, simply I have written here as PEP carboxylase. So here, this enzyme is going to catalyze the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to oxaloacetate without the involvement of ATP but in the pyruvate carboxylase enzyme it requires the ATP but here there is no need of the ATP okay so that means here the phosphoenol pyruvate is itself acting as an energy rich compound and in addition to bacteria this enzyme also occurs in plants so along with E. coli salmonella type medium this uh, is also going to be present there is pep carboxylase is also going to be present in plants also so now uh, we'll see the silent features of this important anaplerotic reactions as i already told you the pyruvate plus carbon dioxide uh, plus atp 
with the water molecule gives rise to the oxaloacetate. So if you see the reaction, then you'll come to know all the things. So here, if you observe, the pyruvate carboxylase is the enzyme which is involved in the conversion of pyruvate to oxaloacetate. So this is an ATP dependent carboxylation reaction, isn't it? So that's what here I have written as ATP. And then second one is going to be a pyruvate is converted to malate. So here you can also have the conversion of this uh, pyruvate with the NADPH molecule gives rise to this compound, okay, malate. And it is also giving rise to some sort of the water molecule also. So this is the pyruvate giving rise to oxaloacetate. And sometimes this pyruvate is also involved in the replenishing of the malate compound also. And one more is the transamination. So what is this transamination? Here comes. The transamination is a process where an amino acid, for example, here is a glutamate, is transferring its amino group to a keto acid and itself get converted into a keto acidic. So here, the alpha ketoglutaric acid is how it came from the glutamate amino acid. The formation of alpha ketoglutarate and oxaloacetate occur by this mechanism. So, for example, here you can see the alanine is getting converted to pyruvate and that pyruvate is going to be given rise to this one. This we had already seen. And in the transamination process, the amino acids like aspartate is going to give rise to the oxaloacetate. So, here is one transamination reaction and at the alpha ketoglutarate also is another transamination mechanism. And now one more is the alpha ketoglutarate can also be synthesized from glutamate as I told you here. Okay, by glutamate dehydrogenase is the enzyme that is involved. Along with all these things, the succinyl CoA can also be replenished by porphyrin. It is going to give rise to the porphyrin rings. And this succinyl CoA can also be synthesized by transamination process of some amino acids. And even uh, this succinyl CoA can also be replenished by some uh, process of fatty acid metabolism by giving rise to the propanyl CoA. And this propanyl CoA can give rise to the succinyl CoA. So that's how there are various types of the reactions that are going to be used to fill up the intermediates of the citric acid cycle. So that's why these all reactions are going to be called as anoplerotic reactions or the process is going to be called as anoplerosis and this anoplerotic reactions can also be called as ancillary reactions. Okay, so this is all about the anoplerotic reactions. As I told you, the glyoxylate cycle or the glyoxylate shunt is also regarded as an anabolic variant of TCA cycle that is citric acid cycle. The glyoxylate cycle is also called as glyoxylate shunt and the, it is actually a modified TCA cycle generally called a bypass of the TCA cycle bypass means where you can come across okay so the animals including man cannot carry out the synthesis of carbohydrates from fats that we know but there are certain plants and microorganisms having a special metabolic pathway to convert the fat into carbohydrate so that what is by that mechanism called as glyoxylate cycle so especially we can find this glyoxylate uh, cycle in the oil seeds okay uh, uh, this uh, the glyoxylate cycle uh, though it is lacking in the animals but we can see that in the plants especially in the oil seeds during the germination process when the stored oil is utilized for the energy production okay there we can see this glyoxylate cycle so we can define the glyoxylate cycle as the metabolic pathway that converts two carbon acetyl molecules into four carbon units that is succinate for energy production and biosynthesis these reaction sequence is going to be called as glyoxylate cycle okay and this cycle occurs in glycosomes, so glyoxysomes are the special type of the cells in which we can find this uh, glyoxylate cycle. 
and in some specialized cellular organelles where fatty acid oxidation is also operative so these are the area areas where we can find this find this glyoxylate cycle okay now this cycle is going to requiring the two unique enzymes what are those two unique enzymes or isocitrate lyase and malate synthase remember these two enzymes because without these two enzymes there is no glyoxylate cycle so as i told you animals including uh, man cannot carry out the synthesis of carbohydrates from fats but the plants especially during the germination the oil containing uh, the seeds containing oil is going to utilize the energy by having this glyoxylate cycle and this glyoxylate cycle is mainly occurring because of the two major enzymes that is isocitrate lyase and malate synthase okay so where this uh, glyoxylate cycle is occurring mainly occurs in the glyoxysomes and in some specialized cellular organelles where uh, fatty acid oxidation is also going to occur let's see the reactions of this glyoxylate cycle so the first one as we know this glyoxylate cycle is a cyclic pathway and the following reactions are going to occur first of all what is happening the acetyl coa produced from fatty acids okay not from the uh, glucose metabolism the acetyl coa that is de uh, derived from the fatty acid metabolism that is beta oxidation of fatty acids how this acetyl ha COA was generated. You can go through the topic called as beta oxidation of fatty acids, where I, I explain in detail about the generation of this acetyl COA from the beta oxidation of fatty acids. Okay, now this acetyl COA that is produced from fatty acid oxidation condenses or combines with oxaloacetate to give rise to citrate. Okay, now we got the citrate, like same how it occurs in the TCA cycle. Now what is happening? From the citrate, that means this citrate is then converted into the isocitrate or cis aconate is the intermediate of di uh, hydration and dehydration of this with the same enzyme aconitase. Now what is the compound that you got is isocitrate. So acetyl coe oxaloacetate combine together, you rise to the citrate. Now this citrate is going to convert it into the isocitrate now this is a step where you have to remember and which is very crucial in this glyoxylate cycle at this stage the isocitrate bypasses the tca cycle generally it have to go like this of generating alpha ketoglutarate succinyl coa like this it have to go but now what is happening it is going to bypass at this step isocitrate is going to be cleaved by an enzyme called as isocitrate lyase into two molecules one is called as glyoxylate as the main compound of this cycle is glyoxylate this was named as glyoxylate cycle and this uh, bypass of a glyoxylate cycle was first uh, given by the Krebs and H.R. Kohornbach okay so those two are the scientists who first studied about this bypass of the TCA cycle uh, mainly in the micro organisms where those microorganisms grow on acetate as the sole carbon sources because they have to utilize two or three carbon compounds for their energy source okay so this Krebs and Korenberg as they said this is a bypass of the TCA cycle and those were the persons who found this glyoxylate cycle now what is the compound that we are getting because of the lysis of isocitrate one is the glyoxylate and another one is the succinate now another molecule of acetyl coa is now utilized to combine with the glyoxylate cycle now here is our glyoxylate and now this glyoxylate is again combining with one more molecule of acetyl coa and this reaction is going to be occurring in the presence of an enzyme called as malate synthase and giving rise to malate now this malate will be converted into oxaloacetate and it combines with one more molecule of acetyl coa and the process of tca cycle continues see here in this process you are not going to have the bypass of this whole process isn't it that is alpha ketoglutarate succinyl coa these are all not occurring so it is directly entering into the uh, malate which is the next to the first step 
So the malate so formed enters the citric acid cycle and now we are getting one more molecule along the lysis of this one is a succinate and this succinate is converted into the oxalic state and then to glucose involving the reactions of gluconeogenesis okay gluconeogenesis so this is how the glyoxylate cycle is going to be the bypass of the TCA cycle so I hope so uh, you understood let's have a quick uh, view of this glyoxylate cycle once again the first step of glyoxylate cycle is oxaloestate is going to combine with the acetyl coa to give rise to the citrate. Now this citrate is going to be converted into the isocitrate. Now at this stage the isocitrate is going to be cleaved into two molecules one as the glyoxylate another one is the succinate in the presence of an enzyme called as isocitrate lyase. Now this glyoxylate with the help of another molecule of acetyl coa give rise to the malate in the presence of an enzyme called as malate synthase. Now the other molecule that came from the isocitrate lysis is succinate and this succinate is converted into oxaloestate and then to glucose involving the reaction of gluconeogenesis. The synthesis of glucose is going to be the gluconeogenesis and the overall reaction of this glyoxylate cycle as I told you it's a cyclic pathway and these are all the steps and the major enzymes that are involved is isocitrate lyase and malate synthase. So whatever the things that I have explained is the same thing here. So the significance of glyoxylate cycle. So why we are going to have this one? As I told you this is a bypass reaction of TCA cycle and it occurs in bacteria when they are cultured in acetate uh, rich carbon source which are going to be of two carbon or three carbons mainly and when higher fatty acids are oxidized into acetyl coa without forming the pyruvate acid then the acetyl coa enters into the glyoxylate cycle obviously and the metabolites of this cycle like succinate can directly be used in the synthesis of uh, porphyrins required for the production of cytochromes chlorophyll and other tetrapyrroles. So these are all the significances of a glyoxylate cycle. Then coming to the overall reaction of the glyoxylate cycle, two molecules of acetyl coa plus NAD plus two, one mole, sorry, two molecules of water is going to give rise to the one molecule of glyoxylate and one molecule of succinate and two molecules of coenzyme A, one NADH plus H plus. So this is the overall reaction of the glyoxylate cycle. So that's how we have ended the topic of anaphylactic reactions which are also called as ancillary reactions and the second type is glyoxylate cycle. The other pathway of uh, bypass of the TCA cycle which can be considered as an anabolic of uh, TCA cycle. Okay, So this is all about the glyoxylate cycle and anaphylactic reactions. Thank you.